You guys know me. I love jerseys. And we finally have all the Nike City Connect jerseys. They're out. They're done. All seven of them that were supposed to come out in the 2021 season have been revealed, have been released. And that means it's time to rank them. I'm going to give you my thoughts, my opinions, my overall feel on what these jerseys look like. Rank them and tell you which one is the best and which one is the worst and all the stuff in between. There have been some fire jerseys, I will admit. And I even own one of them. Shout out to Nike Baseball for sending me the Boston City Connect jersey. Is that my favorite though? We don't know. We'll have to see. Now, real quick, before we get going into the video, obviously drop a like on it, but check that subscribe button. If that sub button's red, it means you're not subbed to my channel and about 55% of you that watch my videos aren't subscribed. It really does help me out. So click the subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of my videos. If you don't, there's a chance you might miss some of them. Also get in the comments down below. Let me know what City Connect jersey is your favorite. There's a lot of good ones. I want to know what you're thinking. And lastly, I want to give a shout out to today's sponsor, SeatGeek. I've partnered up with them to give you guys a great deal on some tickets. If you want any tickets to any sports Sporting events. SeatGeek is the place for you. Download the app, go to SeatGeek.com, pick your tickets in that checkout, use the code giraffe, save yourself $20 off your first purchase. So let's start off with the worst jersey. And I think it's clear and obvious. The worst one is the Los Angeles Dodgers. And I think the Dodgers could have had really, really cool jerseys, but as a whole, it doesn't look great. They wore them up against the Mets this previous weekend, or might even be like two weekends ago now. I don't know. My dates are all screwed up. But last weekend, I think they wore it against the Mets and it just didn't look great. It looked a little better than I thought, but overall, not great. Of course, you got that that Dodger blue and that Dodger blue is a super strong color. The Royal blue is always great. Los Dodgers across the front. I get it. They want to embrace the Hispanic culture around Los Angeles and a lot of the Los Angeles Dodgers fans. I think that's a really cool tribute. Blue jersey top. I like as well. A little black piping on the sleeves. Cool. No issues there just yet. Where it gets weird is with the Royal blue pants, which is a little too much Royal blue. I love Royal blue. It's my favorite color. I'm wearing it right now. That's a little too much blue for me. And then on the hat, the hat's blue and it says Los Dodgers in the regular font across the hat. I don't know why it felt like a weird like lids hat that you would make for cheap on your own like, like the custom stitching thing at the little station that they had over there this is just not a clean jersey it looked even worse when they got dirt and mud on it it looked honestly kind of like there was like poop all over it it's just there's no other way to explain it it looked like there was feces on these jerseys wasn't a good look i think this is clearly the worst one that has been made to me it comes in at number seven coming in at number six another national league west team here and they're probably gonna call bias but let's be honest these san francisco giants ones, not very good. I think they had such a good idea. I think these could have been great. I love the idea of like trying to incorporate San Francisco, obviously into the Jersey City Connect. You want to connect to your city. What they should have done is they should have made these jerseys look like prisoner jumpsuits or inmate suits to give a little bit of a tribute to Alcatraz, of course, in San Francisco. I get what they were trying to do with like the haze and the fog and the Golden Gate Bridge and all that. Like I, I, I like the idea, but I think the execution just isn't great. While it definitely does look like the jersey is a little bit like smoke smoky or foggy. It's not great branding in my eyes. It just looks like they're wearing creamsicle jerseys. And I'm not talking about like cool creamsicle stuff. I'm talking about like the actual ice pop creamsicle. I don't feel like I've seen many Giants fans wear these. They're not horrible, but they're just not good. And I think they could have been really, really cool. The Giants have such a historic logo, such historic colors. It's a historic team. I would have liked to have seen them done something really cool with it instead of this foggy Golden Gate Bridge fogness all over the place. And the G on the front was weird too. Not a fan. But I do think it's significantly better than the Dodgers. Number five, at top five, I guess, but there's really only seven teams, so lower half. But it's gonna be the Chicago Cubs. Very, very similar to the Dodgers in that they went with a one color jumpsuit kind of thing here. They went with the dark navy blue top and the dark navy blue pants, something we don't see too often in Major League Baseball. I haven't seen a lot in the history of the game. I feel like the last time I can remember like dark navy pants was maybe the Chicago White Sox. And I don't even remember how long ago that was. I was definitely not born yet. I actually like these jerseys. I think Wrigleyville on the front is cool. I think it's decent. I know a lot of people on social media were giving these a lot of crap, but I think they look a lot better as a full uniform than just as the actual jersey itself, which even then I think isn't that bad. I think it gets a bad rep. Navy blue, the light blue, the white is decent. I like that color palette a lot. It doesn't necessarily scream Cubs, but again, they're trying to connect to the city. And of course, Wrigleyville, that's the area where Wrigley Field is at right now in Chicago. The patch on the side incorporates a little bit of the Chicago flag, and which is a huge part of that city's culture, obviously. And the hat is is different. It's fine. The hat is completely fine. I don't hate it. I don't love it. It's okay. What bothers me is how good this could have been. And if you look at the t-shirts that they were dropping for this Wrigleyville jersey, like City Connect stuff, this is what they should have looked like. This light blue with the Chicago flag and the C with the star in the middle. This should have been what's on the jersey. So for me, that's what keeps it in this number five range is like the third worst or the fifth best, whichever way you want to phrase it. They had opportunity to do really good stuff here. I don't think it's bad. Again, just don't think it's very good. Number four for me, it's going to be the one that I showed you earlier in this video. It's the Boston Red Sox. 
Rock City Connect jersey. But I actually like this one a lot. I actually like this one a lot because it seems like they went out and tried to do something unique. They embraced the Boston Marathon colors, the light blue, the yellow. That's what the Boston Marathon colors for like, I think the stuff on your shoulder or whatever it's all about. They put that patch on the shoulder or on the sleeve to like kind of incorporate the Boston Marathon feel. The one weird thing is definitely the hat. That's a UCLA Bruins hat. Anyway, he sliced it. That just looks exactly like the UCLA hat that the college team wears. But I think the jersey is really, really cool. You don't see a lot of bright yellow jerseys in the game, maybe for a reason. A lot of people probably don't like it, but the yellow, the baby blue, the white. To me, that's a very clean look. Very, very solid jersey. I mean, I own it. Granted, Nike sent it to me, but I would have liked to have bought this one myself anyway, because I think it's a really cool jersey. I wanted it in my collection. Solid number four. This is where we're starting to really get into the ones that I like. Number three, I think this one is criminally underrated. It's the Arizona Diamondback City Connect jersey. The Diamondbacks have had some interesting jerseys over the years. They've changed colors. They've changed logos. They've changed designs. But this jersey right here, this is a keeper. I want to see the Diamondbacks pull out the Serpientes City Connect jersey way more often. This is so cool, so clean, so sick. And again, something different. I like seeing the City Connect jerseys be something that we don't always see, taking a little bit of risk. That's why I don't really like the Giants one. There just wasn't a lot of risk there. Boo, boring, white jersey, black. This beige with Serpientes across the front, of course, a little bit of Spanish. The gold uniform referencing the Sonoran Desert, which is a part of the state of Arizona. But they still kept the team's colors in there as well. You still got a little bit of red, a little bit of that maroon color. This to me is a really, really cool alternate jersey. This is one that I'm trying to buy very, very soon. I went to the MLB shop in New York. They didn't have it in my size, but once they do, I'm interested in the Serpientes jersey. Get me a Cattell Marte or Zach Allen. I think this one's just so nice. Like it's a different color. It's a different look. Very clean. And I love it. Just missing out on the number one spot coming in at number two on my stream on Twitch, twitch.tv slash draftneckmark. Links in the description. I said this was my favorite, but I forgot about a certain one that's at number one. We're going with the Chicago White Sox City Connect jersey. These are awesome. These are some of the best jerseys in baseball. These were absolutely sick. First off, south side across the front. That is tough. That is a tough looking jersey. Black with the white pinstripes, the white piping, I guess that's called on the sleeves or like collar of the sleeves. That feels weird to say. So good. Even though Nike logo, which a lot of people don't like on the jerseys, it fits perfectly with this one. It pops off of it. The font is sick. The numbers are sick. The color, the black with the white pinstripes is sick. The hat is sick. C-H-I on it on a black hat with the cool font. The one thing I have a problem with is on the back, I would have loved to have seen the name in white instead of like black on black because that's a little tough to read, but the number pops off it great. You have some of the coolest players in all of baseball, some of the most swag on this team with Tim Anderson, Yoan Mankata, Luis Robert, Eloy Jimenez. Well, some of those guys didn't get to wear it. Tim Anderson, Yoan Mankata did, and it looked sick. This was an awesome, awesome jersey by Nike. Almost flawless, almost. So very close. The name thing on the back, if I'm gonna nitpick here, but I have to when I'm ranking. I gotta be specific. I'm buying this jersey as well. This one I need. I need it badly. We're gonna get it. Somehow, some way, we're getting a Tim Anderson Southside jersey because it's amazing. And then, of course, that leaves us with the number one overall spot. It's the Miami Marlins, the Cuban Sugar King jerseys. Oh, this is perfection. This is perfection on a jersey. This is unbelievable. Everything that they did here was fantastic. Take a look at those. You might not ever see a better City Connect jersey made by Nike. I'm really convinced that this is probably going to be the cream of the crop until the end of time for City Connect in Major League Baseball. The red jersey is so good. I mean, the Marlins kind of had this like weird identity crisis where their colors are strong, but they don't really use it. They focus on the black a lot more, which doesn't make sense to me. They should be focusing on these bright, vibrant colors. And when I see this, I go, this should be their new jersey. This should be their colors. This should be their theme. This should be everything because it's perfect. There's nothing wrong with this jersey. The red pops, the white Miami across the front. Oh, it just, it flies off the jersey. The white pinstripes, not too many pinstripes, just a few. Looks great. The name and the number on the back with the blue shadow is fantastic. Paying homage to the Cuban Sugar Kings, of course, big part of Miami, the Cuban culture. I love that idea. The hat, the baby blue with the red bill. You don't think it would work, but boy, does it work flawlessly with the white pants, the blue belt, the blue socks. Oh my God, it's so clean. And then have you guys seen the helmet when they were wearing these in the game? The helmet was unbelievable. The helmet might be my favorite thing. I got some signed helmets behind me. If I could get a Miami Marlins signed helmet in that color, that's sick. I, I have to put in my collection, even though they're in the National League East, it's because it looks that good. And Jazz Chisholm rocking these? Yeah, I mean, that's probably the coolest thing we've seen all year. Jazz Chisholm in the Miami Cuban Sugar King City Connect jerseys? Unbelievable. He was made to wear these jerseys. These right here are undoubtedly the best City Connect jerseys that MLB and Nike has released this season. You just can't disagree. These are the best. No debate. Now, if 
for some reason you disagree with me, which I can't imagine why you ever would, let me know in the comment section down below what you think is the best and worst jersey from the Nike City Connect collection. Drop a like on the video if you did enjoy it. Subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on the videos that I'm uploading. Drop me a follow on all my social media, Giraffe Neck Mark, links in the description. That's where I'm going to wrap up today's video. You guys know the drill from here on out. YouTube recommends you watch this video. This is my most recent upload. Click through those if you have not yet seen them. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you all tomorrow for another video. Bye.